Hello everyone and welcome! Vasco here from the Angular University. At this point in the course we are going to introduce the RxJS library. So let's have a quick look at our program, what we have so far. We have been using these notions of observer, observable, so this is the core concept and other concepts are needed to be able to use it effectively, such as the observer or the subject. We have been using this set of concepts that represent an evolution from this pattern here, so they solve some of the issues that this pattern had. We have been using these concepts to build our applications to build asynchronous programs. What we are going to do now is, instead of using these custom types that we have used here, we are going to be using the RxJS library. So I really encourage you to see the newest RxJS documentation because it is much improved. If you have a look here at the public API of the library, you will see that everything is about subjects, it's about the observable, it's about the observer. So everything about the library revolves around these three concepts. So in a nutshell, what is RxJS? We can say that RxJS is a toolkit that allows us to build programs, asynchronous programs, around the observable pattern that we have been discussing on the previous section. If you now have a look at the multiple operators, you will see that everything about the library is about creating observables, creating subjects and combining the two, connecting the two together in the multiple different ways that we need to build our application. So it all revolves around the observable pattern. So what we're going to do now is we are going back to our program. We are going to take the version of the program that we had here. We are going to delete all these custom types that we made and we are going to replace it with RxJS. We are going to see that RxJS is simply a toolkit to build programs around the observable pattern. So let's get started. The first thing to do is we go to the terminal and we are going to check out a new branch for our application. We are going to check out the branch that it's called introduce rxjs. So again, we are going to create here a local branch and we are going to check out the remote branch that has the same name under origin. So with this, if you now do git branch, you should see that you are currently on the introduce rxjs local branch. Please ignore the other branches that you have here. These are just some of the local branches that I have here on my computer. So by starting in this branch, we are going to run npm start in the root directory of the course repository and we are going to start our application. So at this point, we can already start using RxJS. We don't need to install it separately because the Angular CLI already added RxJS to your package.json. So what we're going to do here is we are going to delete these concepts, the observer, the subject and the subject implementation as well. And we are going to replace this with some new imports that we are going to take from RxJS. And now let's start refactoring our program to use RxJS instead of our custom types. So let's start by refactoring the data store. Let's see, we no longer have here a subject implementation. Well, the subject class that is imported from RxJS is the default subject implementation that we have. So we can use it here. If you look inside its code, it's in every way similar to what we had implemented ourselves by hand. Now, if we over over here the first use of observable, we can see here that the observable that we import from RxJS is a generic type. This means that whenever we declare an observable in our program, we need to say what data is that observable emitting. So in this case, we know that our observable will be emitting a list of lessons. So we are going to add here the lesson array type as the generic parameter of the observable type. Now let's continue our refactoring. Take a look at the lessons list observable. So remember the dollar means that this is an observable. So what we have here is a custom implementation of an observable that is inherently tied or connected to this subject here. So this observable is essentially directly connected to this subject. What we can do is instead of defining this ourselves by hand, we're going to delete this. 
and we are going to use the RxJS library. We are going to go to the lessons list subject type and we are going to derive from it an observable directly. So the lessons list observable will emit the values that are broadcasted via this subject, but the subject is kept private. So this is super important for the observable pattern. There will always be a subject no matter what observable we are using, even if it's the Angular HTTP library, even if it's some other library that we are using, there is always a subject involved whenever there is an observable. So something in the program is emitting the new values of data. It's just that we want to keep that ability of emitting data private at all times to the owner of the data. So right now we are creating here a subject and we are deriving an observable from it. So the rest of the application subscribes to this observable, but does not have access to the subject, which was exactly what we were looking for. So with this change, we have here a compiling data store class. And with this, we have introduced RxJS in our program. As we can see, it's simply a toolkit for building asynchronous applications around the observable pattern and its associated concepts such as subjects, observers, etc. So now that we have refactored the store, let's continue refactoring our application for using RxJS instead of our custom observable implementation. This is coming right up in the next lesson.